So for today's video, I'm actually going to be reading all the books that were recently recommended in one of Yasmin the Reader's videos. I will link that video somewhere, or like show you the thumbnail somewhere. Um, so she recently had a video where it was her favorite, I don't know if they're all contemporaries, but it was her favorite standalones. So Yasmin's a YouTuber that I recently started watching, and I've just been obsessed with her channel, to be honest. She doesn't know who I am, she won't watch this, so we don't have to be worried about embarrassment. Um, but if you haven't checked her out, you can. Her aesthetic is just very calm and soothing. Yeah, that's all I'll say. You can check out her channel if you want. I still struggle with the fact that I don't necessarily have go-to channels that I trust their opinion 100% and that when they recommend a book, I'm like, yes, I am reading that. Um, or like, you know, 100% on my TBR. I still find with a lot of channels, I'll listen to what the person has to say and then I, I kind of like judge, do I think I would like what they said they would like? Do I think I would like that topic? Because so many people have done me dirty. <laughs> Not intentionally, obviously, but a lot of people have said they loved something and I go and read it and I'm like, I don't really know what there is to love about it. This is just something I've been struggling with to find someone who has fairly similar taste to me. So yeah, I guess this is an experiment for me to see if I trust Yasmin the Reader's opinion. And I should say that this will have no bearing on the fact that I still love this person's channel. Oh my god. Oops. I guess I should show you. These are the first two books that I'm going to work on. Letters to the Lost. Dun dun dun. And then We Are the Ants. Na 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 na. Um, I, one of the books my library just did not have, so we got the ebook for that, and I think that one was called Ophelia, no, Aurelia, Aurelia, it's, it's just a girl's name. And the last one is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman, and I have that one on hold, and as soon as it's in, it will also be included in this video. So, without further ado, let's get started after I finish my research paper. Hi, there's barely just enough light for me to get this one update in, so we're gonna try to do this fairly quickly. I have read now 22 pages of Letters to the Lost, minus one, like, kind of offhandedly rude comment to Africa. Oh my god, I'm already loving this book so much. Um, it's just... It's like the perfect mix of melancholy and it just takes me right back to my high school days when I was listening to My Chemical Romance and like Blink-182, it's like just sad songs, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a little bit emo and I'm like obsessed with it right now. It's already been so thought provoking for me. That part won't necessarily apply to everyone, um, but when my dad first had his stroke, it felt like in a way I had lost somebody and that he had died. And there were many times during his recovery where in a weird way I had wished he just had died instead of having the stroke because it felt like he died, but people weren't really treating it as if he died. And so I, like, I don't know how to explain it, but there were just times where I was like, I think it would just be a cleaner cut easier if he had just passed away instead of having this body that looks like my dad but doesn't really act like him. But now, years later, looking back, I'm realizing how it's actually like totally not the same and that in the end, like at the time it feels the same, but in the end it is totally different. And I think the scary part about death is just the finality of it and like how, I don't know if that's a word, but like how, like it's so you're never getting them back regardless, you know what I mean? And like you totally can't change anything. And like years later, like I can still talk to my dad. Um, he might not be able to communicate with me that well, but like we can still make new memories and there's the potential for you to still have hope that things can get better. Whereas like if someone passes away, like you just, you don't have any of that. You don't have any luxury of possibly hoping for like a better Better future really so I've been thinking about that I've also I just wanted to read you a letter that's written it's only from chapter 5 so I don't think it'll give anything away but it will give you the vibe of this beautiful story have you ever heard of Kevin Carter he won a Pulitzer for a photograph of a dying girl it's a pretty famous photo so maybe you've seen it a little girl was starving in the Sudan trying to reach a feeding station she needed to stop to rest because she was barely more than a skeleton held together by a stretch of skin she needed to rest because she wasn't strong enough to get to the food in one trip. So she rested in the dirt, this tiny little girl, while a vulture sat nearby, waiting. Do you get it? Waiting? For her to die? I think of that picture sometimes, of that moment. Sometimes I feel like the girl. Sometimes I feel like the bird. Sometimes I feel like the photographer, unable to do anything but watch. Kevin Carter killed himself after he won the Pulitzer. Sometimes I think I understand why. I think like after I read that it was just 
solidified in my mind that I'm obsessed with this book already and I just I love all the depressed emotions if I'm being very honest I just like I love it I love it I I think most days like I run pretty low but like I'm high functioning low if that makes sense but I'm not always nearly as happy as most people seem to be and like I work pretty hard to try to maintain a decent level of happiness and I just reading about sad characters is like my jam I've realized anyways um, I'm gonna go back to reading now there's no more light I'll update tomorrow I think I'm gonna get through this one really quickly I have a feeling I can already tell I'm kind of obsessed with this it's I actually checked it it was only written two years ago in 2017 but it gives that nostalgic feeling of really great YA when I was a teenager. All right I will see you tomorrow then. It's 2 p.m. the next day and guess what? <laughs> um, I've already f oh, I've already finished the book and it was phenomenal. It was so good. Hello! In editing I realized that I actually um, I'm out of focus for my entire wrap-up of Letters to the Lost and honestly I love this book so much that I thought it would be a disservice to wrap it up while I am not in focus and the mess of my shelves is. So I'm redoing it. I loved this book with all of my heart. Everything about it was just pure perfection for me. I loved the angst, I loved the characters, I loved the pain that everybody felt. I just, this really transported me back to me being a teenager and it brought out emotions that I really didn't think as a 28 year old you could have. <laughs> Honestly this kind of reminds me, like if you're a fan of Eliza and her monsters, this is like her cool older sister. Just like the pain and the beauty and the letters and everything about it and the romance that's in it, it's just, oh. If I had read this as a teenager, like, I would not have been okay. Um, still, when I think about this, like, my chest hurts, but, like, in a good way, and, like, I'm a very emotional kind of way. Now, let me think of some coherent thoughts, and I <laughs> will relay them to you. I stayed up almost till 4 a.m. reading this book. Like, that's how good it was. And just, the emotions hit me so hard. Like, literally, that entire night that I stayed up reading it, I was reading, and then I was crying, and then I was reading, and then I was crying, and then I was reading, and I was crying, and, I was reading, and, I was crying, and it just... It triggered so many emotions within me because I could just, I felt their pain so much and it never felt forced, like it was just that I could relate to the characters on such a deep level that I got sad, you know, and I just, I don't even know if I could objectively give you that many criticisms. I'm sure there are problems with it and I'm sure for some people if you can't relate necessarily to their pain that maybe you might feel like it's like a little too much or these kids make no sense or they need to just be happier or something like that. And I don't think that this book is for everyone. I do think that it's a very particular type of person. Like honestly read the first few chapters and if already you think this is just like too like weird or out there for me then you won't like this book. But for me personally like I love delving into the characters and their thought process and what makes them think the way they do and how these traumas have affected them and how they relate to the rest of the world and I, I loved it. For me in particular the depiction of grief it was just so good. It was so well done and it wasn't like any one thing it was just all these small moments that make you remember like how overwhelming the emotions can be in the moment and just like like that feeling that you're on edge all the time and that like any small thing can just make you start bawling or can make you you know like not be okay like you're okay 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 but you feel like you're holding back like a flood that's ready to happen and it's just somebody does one tiny small thing and it just triggers that in you and then you, you're not okay. <laughs> um, and that feeling was so well captured in this book and I think that's one of the reasons like it for me it was like reliving when I went through that. So it was just like, it was just a lot, but in a good way, but it was a lot. <laughs> Um, and I think it was in a good way though because I have some distance from that and I don't necessarily feel like that anymore. Obviously I think maybe if you're in the middle of grieving, this book probably might be a little too much. <laughs> Although to be fair, like when I was in the midst of it, Eliza and her monsters, I, I liked for the reason that Eliza never sugarcoats anything and she was so upset and mad at the world that I just resonated with her because I was like, finally someone who gets how shitty the world is. Who knows, you might actually really like this book because it's so dark. I love the romance. The romance is so angsty and it was such a throwback to everything that I loved in YA 
when I was younger. I also like even there was a bit of anger management issues in this book and there were times where it was verging on romanticizing violence and although me personally I've already been brainwashed and sometimes I read it and still enjoy it even though I know it's really bad and it pollutes young women's minds. This book like handled it fairly well. It like every time it was trying to go into that territory it kind of reined itself in. It doesn't do it super problematically and it does address it at least. The other thing I thought that some people might not like necessarily, if you can express yourself really easily you might be frustrated with these characters because both of them have some difficulty communicating. I know a lot of people hate the trope of like if characters would just communicate with each other then like there would be no story type thing. There is some lack of communication but I personally like I totally understood the lack of communication because I could relate to that. Honestly there's moments where they write letters to each other and if I like didn't actively remind myself that I'm not in real life right now like I would think these letters were addressed to me sometimes like I was so into it. I mean it was also like 3 a.m. so maybe I was kind of like you know when reality and sleeping land are kind of meshing together. This book tore me to shreds. It was everything. It put me back together. It was just I like I don't know what else to say. I loved it so much and this wrap up has just been a gush for 25 minutes but hello this is editing me back again. This is the first time for you but I've actually already filmed an editing clip that I think will go in later at the video. Anyways <laughs> um, as I was editing I noticed that for some reason I'm like missing any footage of me talking about We Are the Ants, which was the second book that I read for this video. <sighs> and it's been like five months since I did this video, so do I remember anything? Not really, but I still really want to make this video. I'm determined to have it as like a full thing. So I guess I'm going to give you like my five month later opinion. So I'll quickly explain the premise because I do think it's sort of interesting, but essentially it's about this boy who keeps getting abducted by aliens and the aliens are trying to teach him something but he's not really sure what. No that's not true. I, the aliens are trying to like teach him how he can save the world and he kind of has to make this decision whether or not he wants to save the world. At first I thought it was one of those books where it just kind of seems nonsensical and just absurd for no reason but you accept it but actually it becomes a much bigger metaphor for like do you want humanity to keep existing and and do you believe that humans are capable of good or do you think the world would be better off if humans didn't exist and it actually becomes super interesting um so i was pleasantly surprised by where the story went given the very strange premise so i do like the book um and i thought the characters were well done i thought everybody was like a little bit fun and delicate as seems to be the taste of with a lot of people on booktube i'm so used to like the badass hard assassins that when I read these contemporaries I forget that that's like the norm with contemporaries is like these very soft romantic characters and I'm just not used to it but it, it's fun. Um, anyways the only few things I thought were weird about the book is I think towards the end it gets a little bit violent like unnecessarily so. Yeah they're just like a kind of weird sort of attempted rape scene that was like very unnecessary to the story that I was like, mm. uh, some other fun things, there's the main character is queer um, and already out and just like living life so that's not like that never actually interferes with the story. I'm so mad that I lost this footage. As someone who likes science a little bit, I thought that all the little tidbits about um, space and like how the universe works and how the author would tie that into the story I thought was really fun so I guess I liked the style it was written in. I guess I'd say overall I enjoyed this book. It's just not something that I would usually reach for. Um, and I definitely didn't love it as much as I love Letters to the Lost, but I still liked it quite a bit. And I liked it better than this next book that I'm gonna talk to you about. Next, I picked up Radio Silence. So this one actually it was Yasmin's favorite from all of them. So I feel like I was most excited going into this one. And I think the premise was also pretty cool. Um, like I talked about Letters of the Lost being like Eliza and her monsters. Um, but this one is a similarly like the same kind of concept. There's some online people, um, there's a fan fiction and a comic, or no, a podcast, sorry, a podcast and a fan art account. So similar type of vibe and like the fan meets the creator of it, etc. 
Unlike Eliza and her monsters though, the premise of this is that they quickly find out and that it's like their friendship and they already know each other's identities. So I was kind of surprised at how quickly they figure it out. This book, I actually, I guess I had the highest expectations going into this book and so far if I'm being honest, like I'm not liking it. <laughs> um, I have been on page 172 for a couple days now and if I wasn't doing this project, I would probably put this book down or move on to something else. Alec just doesn't talk because he's super like introverted, self-reflective, and just a quiet person, like will not open up easily to people. So I find his character interesting, but you don't really get much of it because we're not in his head. Um, and usually these type of like really quiet characters work in books because you can read their minds, but because it's not from his perspective, you can't read his mind. Um, and then the main character, uh, Francis, not Al, yeah, the main character, Francis, I just, I find her so annoying. <laughs> She's not shy, necessarily. She actually talks a lot. The book tells me that she is socially awkward and she has zero friends. Okay. Um, and she has zero friends. And I just, I don't understand why she has absolutely no friends. Like that part, I just don't, get and so then I'm like okay well are you choosing to not have friends like do you just not want friends or can you not interact with people like why don't you have any friends whatsoever the way she acts sometimes I wonder if maybe she's just like actually is kind of strange and so like people just don't know how to interact with her I'm told that she's quirky and weird and whatnot but I I don't buy it I guess like I don't really by how she's awkward. She seems to talk fairly easily. She rambles off. She's very open about her feelings and whatnot. I don't get the sense that she is super reserved. Like I just, I don't quite get it. The only thing that I've noticed is she has anxiety when it comes to schooling. So she will prioritize school in like an unhealthy way over all other stuff. But even if you had that type of anxiety, so you drive people away, I, I still don't think that you wouldn't have any friends. I can't explain it properly, but reading this book, I just, I'm so confused. I don't buy that her actions kind of line up with the way she's being presented to me. And then on top of that, like we're told multiple times that this isn't a love story between the two main characters. And yet there's these lines that like the author makes it hints at as if this was going to be romantic like there'll be stuff like no 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 and then it'll end with and then i fell on top of him and it's like why would you end it like that if this isn't a romance <laughs> like it's just it's weird i i guess like weird can be good but this is just and i have social anxiety so i can relate to that aspect but for some reason when i read about her social anxiety I, although i don't think she has social anxiety i think she just has like general anxiety about everything. I'm trying to think about it. Maybe her strangeness and her like irritability and all this stuff is part of that general anxiety and I'm just being, you know, a bit of a douchebag. I, I just don't get her. <laughs> I think that's the problem. Another thing that I wasn't super keen on is there's excerpts from the podcast, similar to how Eliza and her monsters will have excerpts from the actual comic strip. Like I don't really know what these excerpts of the podcast add. I read them and then I've reread them and sometimes it's like a small theme is kind of hinted at that is what's gonna happen next but it's not it's very subtle if it's there I don't know if I'm reading into it too much otherwise like I just I read them and they just go in one ear out the other and I don't really get what the purpose of it is like at least with Eliza and her monsters I felt like we would get snippets but then we would also from Eliza hear what was so important about that not necessarily that scene but about that setup or about that line and there'd be like people would have tattoos of that one line and how the fandom took that line and made it a tagline things like that whereas for this one we'll get this excerpt and I have no idea what I'm supposed to get from it <laughs> and it's just never talked about again so I, I don't like those too much there's not that many but it's also I find like it's not adding anything to the story one thing that I did find interesting is how the relationship between Alid and Francis is explored at least in the beginning because Francis is a huge fan, Alid's the creator, and I feel like at least you know recently like with BookCon and whatnot that's kind of there's always that power imbalance when one person is the fan 
of another person and it makes things awkward but it's like the truth and it's interesting i wish it explored it more to be honest but that was kind of cool so those are my thoughts on that i also noticed like they don't use a plus i don't know if in the uk it's a star means a plus um so i'm gonna go look that up but for the grades they always put a star and i'm like what the hell? Um, usually it's A plus, so I don't know. I'm gonna go look that up to see if that's just like a North America versus UK thing. Y'all, yeah. all right, that's it. I'm gonna go read now. I finished the book. So I have some thoughts on it. Honestly, the ending of the book, like finishing it, I think would raise my star rating by like 0.2. But all in all, I just did not like this book. It fell so short for me. So I still am not 100% sure why people like it, but I have my guesses. And I think a big part of it is that they can relate to the struggles. I don't know. I don't know if it's the anxiety rep that people like or if it's the fact that the book's message kind of tells you that it's okay to not know what you want to do. One of those two things I think is what makes people like the book. So I kind of want to go over why I personally didn't like the book and I think it is many things and I think some of them is maybe not privilege but maybe it's that I have never struggled with some of the struggles that these characters go through and so I don't have a lot of empathy for it. I think that actually plays a big role in this. For one, I think that a large part of this is not having a sense of direction and not knowing what you want to do with your life and kind of how in your last year of high school, there's this big question of what type of post-secondary education do you want to pursue? If any, do you want to go to college or university or what program or do you want to take a year off? Do you want to go travel? I have no idea, but like kind of those decisions and not being ready to make that decision because you don't actually know what you want to do with your life. That's something honestly like I can't really relate to because I knew maybe since I was 16 what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure that I'd like it but I had made the decision and then I did health science in university and like I kind of took a well-known path and I was fortunate enough that there weren't too many hiccups along the way and even when there were hiccups like I didn't get in the first year for example but I still knew that I wanted to do it and I just kept going after it there's also the element that so Francis is very good at getting grades like my grades have always been fine and I've never had an issue with that, I've also never been stressed about it. So I haven't always been like 100% A plus the way Frances is, but I also have rarely had the pressure that she's had. So I couldn't relate to her on that level. She does have some social anxiety, which I related to quite a bit. Um, I actually, strangely, there's another character, Alid, who has a lot of difficulty uh, expressing himself and especially when it's an emotionally charged situation. That one I related to 100%. So although Alid is way more dramatic than I am, that was something that I could relate to. But going back to Frances, I felt like so many of her problems would be resolved if she just like recognized when she was doing things for other people and when she was doing them for herself. I felt like she didn't have a good grasp on herself. Like she didn't understand herself very well. And because she wasn't very self-aware, she would just do things because she thought society expected them. I'm not sure why. It, like, I don't know where that pressure came from. It sounds like it was just society because her mom never puts any pressure on her that I've seen. So I don't know where this pressure comes from, but it seems to be like kind of self-created. And then halfway through the book, Actually, I can't talk about that because that's a spoiler. Yeah, and I just felt like a lot of her conflict could be resolved if she just took a second to think, like, what do I want to do? Like, sit down and just reflect and think about it before doing whatever she thinks society, like, wants you to do. I just felt like what we were getting and what was being implied didn't always necessarily add up. There were times where I felt like we were led to believe that it's a certain concept that is making this conflict when in reality I felt like it's actually something else that's making the conflict. One example of that is, and this is slightly spoilery, so I will put a little like timestamp or something so you can skip ahead. Frances, when she goes for her interview, I felt like 
it was set up to talk about so many different factors that were kind of working against her in the setting. First off, the fact that she's biracial, but that the panelists were all old white men. I think that was a perfect setup to do some commentary on like academia and who gets to decide what our societal norms are, things like that. But it's never really addressed past just mentioning that that's a thing. And then second, the way it's written, it kind of makes it seem like it's Francis's anxiety that is making her have difficulty with the interaction. At least that's what I felt was trying to be portrayed um, because the brackets, like what they were saying, it felt like her thoughts were spiraling even though she couldn't get her words out. And yet some of the things she was saying, like I wasn't prepared for that question or why would they ask me that question, things like that. I was like, girl, those are the most basic questions. Like you didn't prepare for this interview and I'm supposed to believe that this girl who's super type A and all she cares about is school and is only ever stressed out about school did not put a shit ton of effort into preparing herself for the interviews. Like if you wrote an entire essay thing to send to Cambridge that talks about the catcher in the rye and how much you love it or whatever, how could you not then answer the question like what inspires you about it? Or like what do you find inspirational? Like girl, did you not write the paper? Did you not spend hours like trying to decide what to write and do you know what I mean? Like it just doesn't make sense. Like if you were that stressed and you put that much effort into it, you could have an answer. Would you maybe not answer eloquently because you're nervous? Fine. Would you take a while or sound awkward? Maybe. But why can't you answer the question? <laughs> like I don't know if I'm being insensitive, but I just truly felt like the issue there was that if low-key you never wanted to do English, like why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you, you know what I mean? And then it just comes back to, here's this girl who's put these pressures on herself, I'm not sure why. And really the heart of the issue is that she does not feel comfortable standing up and voicing her own opinion. And she just doesn't feel comfortable enough in her skin to tell the world that this is what I wanna do. Even though this isn't necessarily a non-accepted route like i i recognize that if you're from a really conservative place maybe going to art school is not as like prestigious i guess as studying english at cambridge i'm not too familiar with uk's like schooling system but there were parts of this where i was just like i feel like we're in some really conservative town or something because the things you're telling me that are making you scared or uncomfortable to present yourself like these aren't things that should be making you uncomfortable they're not necessarily things that are frowned upon and maybe i'm just like more progressive than this town i don't know there's this metaphor with clothing in the book about how alid and francis don't feel like themselves because they can't wear the clothes that they want to wear like it might not be accepted and then like they describe the clothing and Francis's clothing for example one of them was just leggings or a jacket with the ninja turtles on it and in my mind I was literally like like is there not a 90s revival going on right now so why is that so weird <laughs> like I just don't you can wear your ninja turtles clothing and I'm sure no one will give a shit and it's not that weird so it kind of felt like who Put this pressure that you have to wear basic colored clothing or like solid color clothing like who i just never really understood where these pressures or where these like societal norms necessarily were coming from and maybe again that's me not knowing british culture that much but i don't think it's that <laughs> like i have seen primark i have watched british shows i know that they wear quote unquote crazy clothing by francis's standards and i know that that's not uncommon or weird. So yeah, and then the worst part of it all is that the coolest part of Frances is probably that she's Ethiopian and we just don't get any of that. Like her father who is Ethiopian had, or like makes up her Ethiopian half, left them, I don't know when, so I guess he took all that culture with her, which is really unfortunate because that was probably the most interesting part of Francis and we just never get to see it. Like she literally never drinks a good cup of coffee. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about the book. I honestly, like I did not like it and part of not liking it is because I just did not like Francis. There were so many times where the book could have gone a bit deeper in the commentary of society that it was trying to make and it just didn't bother going in that direction and I wish it had. Like even the premise of university being pushed on students and whether or not this path that we've created is it actually like what we need to do like i actually agreed with how francis ended up seeing university and seeing her smartness as just being useful not necessarily 
something that makes her better than someone else. Like I thought that was great. I thought that was a really good way of looking at our system because I don't think that our system necessarily values educating people in the grand scale of things. I think it really focuses on like certain aspects and it's designed for certain people to succeed. I just felt like so many other types of successes and so many other paths other than university have been normalized. So that whole struggle, to be honest, fell short for me. It just like, the book gets very dramatic. Like in Alid's case, like I said, the mom is a pyromaniac or sociopath. So maybe he has some reasons, like he's been traumatized for sure. So he has an excuse, but Francis has the most supportive mother on the planet. So I just like don't even know where her fear was coming from. In a weird way, I recognize that the whole point of this is that that anxiety and that fear probably is irrational and comes from nowhere. And the person just makes it and their head just works like that. And so because of that, I sometimes feel like maybe I'm being insensitive to Francis, but also like, I'm sorry, Francis has a lot of privilege. <laughs> it could be so much worse. And I just, it was hard not to just think of Francis as like someone sitting there complaining when life could be so, 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 so much worse. So those are my thoughts on Radio Silence. Unfortunately, Yasmin's favorite book at the moment is my least favorite. We have one more to go. Hello, this is editing me. I just wanted to pop in and say that I never ended up finishing the fourth book. I actually never started it. I, Eleanor, I think it was called. I'm trying to remember, this is like five months later, but essentially it was only a few weeks before the start of residency and I was starting to get nervous because that's a lot of responsibility and I just didn't want to read something depressing and I think that one also deals with grief so I thought I'd hold off on it and then I just ended up getting so busy that I never bothered to read the final book. I will read this last book. I just literally have so many people that I'm reading so many different books with right now that I don't see myself picking it up anytime in the foreseeable future and I really wanted some content on my channel. So I'm just going to wrap this up so I can make it and then if I ever read the fourth book I'll give a little update. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you're having a great day. Bye! <laughs>